record to the cloud. Okay, we are recording and tonight I am, I have the honor of introducing one of our co-founders, uh, but also not just that, a doctor, Dr. Wendy Lyon. Wendy's been helping individuals and couples to transform their lives and create great relationships for over 20 years. Wendy is a master relationship coach, certified clear beliefs coach, and mentor for two relationship coaching institutes. As an author, she contributed to the best-selling book, including Roadmap to Success with Deepak Chopra and Ken Blanchard. She holds a doctorate in psychology and was a college psychology professor, as well as self-development trainer. Every few years, Wendy leads transformational retreats in places like Costa Rica and Maui. Sucks to be her, right? <laughs> Today, she'll be sharing her relationship survival tips, how to stay sane and connected while sheltering in place. Wendy is also at the end, she'll be telling you a little bit more about this, but she will be offering complimentary consultations to the first seven people who contact her. Please welcome Wendy. Go for it, Wendy. Hey, thank you so much, Andrea. It's such a pleasure to be here with all of you. So you might be feeling uncertain or anxious right now about your health, wealth, security, or relationships. Perhaps you're feeling isolated, frustrated, or maybe you're going stir crazy while you're sheltering in place. Does that sound familiar to anybody? You're all muted, right. <laughs> so yeah, so sheltering together can, it can bring people closer or it can end relationships. In China right now, the divorce rates have skyrocketed. The city of Wuhan went from an average of about 12 divorces a week to about 300 a week after they had a two and a half month quarantine. So hopefully that is not where you're headed. So today I wanna to share some relationship survival tips to help you stay sane and connected, whether you're on your own or with others. So you might want to get a pen and paper and take notes. And I want to start by reminding you that your most important relationship is with yourself. So let's start with three tips to help you stay sane and have a healthy relationship with yourself while you're under quarantine. Sound good? Yeah. So my first tip is to choose where you focus your attention. It's really easy to be fearful and anxious right now. And our brains are actually wired to focus in on negative things. For most of human history, this has been adaptive to have this negative negativity bias. So we think of ourselves as, you know, top of the food chain, but humans have a long history of being prey to a variety of different animals, including way back when saber toothed cats, snakes, and giant carnivorous kangaroos. I am not kidding, I looked this up. So when we saw, or when our ancestors saw or heard a sign of danger, maybe a movement in the grass, maybe a strange shadow, we'd have an immediate fight or flight reaction. And our hearts would start racing, our breathing would quicken, we'd be ready to leap into action, which usually meant to you know, go run and hide, sometimes throw a stick and then run away. So, so our ancestors survived by being attentive to threats and we haven't evolved all that much. We tend to react to our modern challenges like they're life-threatening, which in some cases they can be, but usually they're not. And while it's really useful to have that quick reaction to real threat, it's not helpful or healthy to stay in a, a high stress mode, to stay worried and agitated about potential threats. So right now with this pandemic going on and sheltering in place, a lot of people are feeling pretty anxious and worried and nervous or uneasy. So it's really important to honor those feelings, but you don't need to wallow in the worry. You can take a deep breath and you can shift your attention. So breathing deeply actually helps us to calm down and it helps decrease anxiety. So let's just take a moment right now, take a breath together. Let's take a long deep breath together, inhaling and exhaling. And remember 
that you can choose where you put your attention. So rather than focusing on what's wrong or what might go wrong or what's missing in your life, you can focus on what's right or what's good in your life. And you could decide to be grateful for who you are and what you have. Being grateful is really a choice. When we can be grateful, we won't be overwhelmed by temporary circumstances. And gratitude can help us cope with the hard times and find ways to survive and thrive. When we feel grateful, we have more dopamine in our brains and we feel happier. And researchers have found links between gratitude and having lower blood pressure, uh, fewer aches and pains, and improved immunity. And grateful people even have healthier hearts. So sometimes comparing our current situation to something worse makes us more grateful for what we're experiencing right now. And maybe you've been through a challenging time before. I know many of you have. So I'll share a challenging time I went through six years ago. I had just had a lumpectomy for breast cancer. I was getting ready to start daily radiation treatment. My son was three years old. He was still in diapers. My husband was working full time. My son was in daycare only twice a week. And I had to hustle to go find people who could watch him while I was getting treatment every day. So I really learned to be grateful for my life and all the ways that things worked out. They really worked out. My son agreed that he was a big boy and used the potty from then on. That was the end of that, which is great timing. And my friends uh, really rallied to help out and to watch him while I had to go and get treatment. And my husband was a super huge support and members of this very group were also really supportive. I so appreciate that. So I learned to be grateful for all I had, for sure. And in comparison right now, going through this is a heck of a lot easier for me, not for everyone, I know that, but for me, it's, it's pretty easy. And I have a lot to be grateful for right now. Um, my son is now nine and he wants to be a YouTuber. He's pretty savvy on the computer. And my husband is still working hard. He's waiting to get ankle surgery, but otherwise he's okay. And I'm just grateful we're all healthy and together. And I'm, I'm grateful for my amazing clients. I'm working with people remotely. I adore them. I am grateful to be in this group and be part of this amazing group of women. This is such a special group. And you know what? I'm really grateful to be able to walk every day with my sweet husky dog. So I'd like you to just take a moment and think of what you're grateful for. And Andrea, maybe we can open up it up and have a couple shares. Yeah, I'll, uh, uh, let me see. Um, were there any um, messages that came through? Um, okay, uh, oh. let me unmute everybody. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And if anyone, go for it. If there's any questions. Well, actually, I just want to share. Or, or shares. I'm grateful about. Anybody grateful about anything? <laughs> we don't have COVID. <laughs> we don't have COVID. We're, we're healthy. We're, here, we're healthy enough. You know, we're relatively healthy. And, um, Thank you. you. Know, we're, life, there's hope. Yeah. I'm really grateful for this time because it has shown me what really what I value in my life. It's gotten really simple. And there's no gray area or distractions. And so I'm super grateful for my health and uh, family connections and also the time to really connect with friends and family like I never had before. Nice. So that's been a silver lining in, in this time. Hey, okay, thanks, Alani. Do you want to take uh, one more? Um, I'm, I'm grateful to be in Northern California right now. I feel like we're we're very lucky here. Um, I feel like we have a lot of smart people um, watching out for us as a, as a society and in general. Um, you know, I find that most people that I encounter are being very respectful of the boundaries, and I feel like you know we're all learning a lot from this experience, but that we're going to get through it especially people that live here and i'm i, I feel very grateful to <clears throat> to have the privilege of being here with um <clears throat> with all of you and with with my neighbors and and it's it's uh, feel very lucky 
Thank you, for, Michelle. Thanks for sharing. Maybe we want to mute again. Yeah, I'll go ahead and mute everyone. Uh, Wendy, get ready to unmute. Get, wait, uh, I'm loving. Denise, is that your big fat cat there? <laughs> yes. She's trying to scratch and get around, and she's oh my God. very fat. <laughs> Maybe everyone can bring their bring their pets next time. Oh. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to mute everyone. When do you get ready to unmute yourself? Oh, let me do that. There you go. And Wendy, unmute yourself. There you go. Go for it. Okay, great. So yeah, so you can choose where you focus your attention, and you can choose to be grateful. So you guys are making some good choices there. So my second tip to help you stay sane and have a healthy relationship with yourself while you're under quarantine is to give yourself plenty of me time. So this time can really be an opportunity to nurture yourself, make time for what you love, and set aside alone time if you're sheltering with other people. You need to do that every day. Include some time that's just for you, doing whatever it is that you want to spend your time doing. Maybe it's reading, uh, maybe listening to music working on creative projects, taking a walk. I love taking walks with my dog, working in your garden if you have one, exercising, playing an instrument. So this could be a time for inner sanctuary and meditation for you. Or it could be a time for binge watching your favorite TV show. It's up to you how you want to spend it. I've really been enjoying doing yoga, Pilates, and strength training with Andrea. We can't go to the gym right now, but thank goodness for Andrea that she's offering these classes. So oh, we could open it up again just quickly to see what are you guys doing for me time? Anything that you'd like to share? Napping. <laughs> <laughs> Napping! I found a whole shelf full of sewing projects. So I've been sewing and I actually made a whole co new cover for my seat cushion in my office. I, so I put in a zipper. Woo! Wow, that's impressive, Linda. Great. Denise. I have gone out to the woods with my dad, um, without my kids and my husband, just my dad. And we completely socially distanced nice. and relaxed. And I read and I retaught myself about crocheting. And I've also been doing some gardening. Fantastic. Wonderful. Yay. All right. Shall we go back? Anybody? Sure. Okay. Muting again. Lovely. Oh, so I should wait and then. Okay. There you go. I unmuted you, Wendy. Oh, lovely. Thank you. All right. So remember to keep your me time going after this pandemic is over. You deserve your me time. So my third tip for helping you stay sane and have a healthy relationship with yourself right now is to reach out to others, to reach out to people in your life, family, friends, neighbors. When you're feeling lonely or isolated, reach out. You can connect with people. Ask for support if you want support. And if you're feeling discouraged, try encouraging other people. You can ask how you can help. Maybe you can bring people groceries if they need it or just stay in regular contact. So I am loving my earbuds that my husband gave me for Christmas. And every day I walk my dog, I have my earbuds in, and I talk to my father. And he's turning 92 at the end of this month. He is an amazing guy. He's enjoying his social life with his neighbors. They gather every evening at 7 p.m. And uh, they recently had a neighborhood luau. So he's having a great time. And in my neighborhood, people are howling every night. I think they're doing a variety of things. Actually, they've had a happy hours sometimes too. So this is a great time to connect with neighbors, reconnect with old friends, and perhaps reconnect with old flames if you're single. Um, so you can find all kinds of groups and events online, including uh, Julie's uh, dance, Biodanza dance connection group. That's pretty cool. Um, and people are really online in record numbers. Online usage has increased 70%. And if you're single and looking to find somebody, the dating sites are hopping. So there's a lot more traffic on those sites like, like Match and Plenty of Fish and Bumble, all the different online dating sites are, are really seeing a lot of traffic. So in the United States today, there are actually over 110 million single people. And those people are mostly online. They're on their computers, they're on their phones, they're 
interested in meeting somebody. So while we're all stuck at home, this is an ideal time to meet people. You could put up a profile on several different sites. You want to be really clear about who you are and who you're looking for. And you want to screen out the people who don't interest you and focus in on those who do. So some of my clients are having a lot of fun dating on Zoom. They're you know, getting dressed up, at least from the waist up, and, and you know having these dates on Zoom. So, and, and a couple of them are making some pretty deep connections. They're very excited about you know, looking forward to meeting that person that they're connecting with. So there actually are some significant benefits to online dating right now. First of all, there's a lot of people online and you can get to know somebody. You can really have heart to heart conversations. You can learn about their values. You can learn about their dreams. You can decide if you're compatible before being blinded by lust and jumping into bed together, which unfortunately happens too often, I think. So this is a really good time to be conscious and deliberate about dating. And I've been helping people do that for about 20 years now. So I'm happy to support you on your journey if that's something you want to do. So for those of you who are sheltering with others, how do you keep from driving each other crazy? So my first tip for you to survive with others is to have boundaries, to have your own space. We need to have some separation from other people who live with us, especially now when people are home all the time. So make sure you each have your own space where you won't be disturbed while you work or study or relax. So I am so thankful to have my own office and when the door is closed, I'm not available. Usually that works. I'm happy about that. And in addition to having our separate spaces, it's important to have emotional boundaries. So emotional boundaries are interesting. They involve separating your feelings from somebody else's feelings. So just notice if you're taking responsibility for someone's feelings, or if you're letting another person's feelings dictate how you feel. Or notice if you tend to sacrifice your own needs to please another person. Or you might be blaming others for your problems or accepting responsibility for their problems. These are actually all boundary violations. And I know they're really common. This is particularly challenging if you have small children. So my son is nine and when he doesn't have a screen in front of him lately, he sometimes complains that he's bored. And my challenge is to not jump up and take responsibility to make it all better and you know, take responsibility for his boredom, but to let him figure it out on his own, to figure out ways to entertain himself without a screen in front of him. He can do it. So if we have good boundaries, our relationships are easier. And if you're sheltering with other people, it's also essential that you have clear and kind communication. That is so important with any relationships, whether you're living with people or not. So tip number two for surviving with others is to communicate with kindness. It's really easy to find fault with others and complain, but there are definitely better and kinder ways to communicate. And you can actually turn your complaints and demands into requests. So for example, when I see dirty dishes in the living room, and yes, I have seen them lately, I could just start yelling and say, this place is a mess, clean this up right now. And my son probably isn't gonna respond too well to that. Or I can ask, I can ask for what I want in a more kind and respectful way. I say, honey, when you're done with your snack, could you please put those dishes in the sink? And I actually did this today, because <laughs> it happened today. And he said, oh, sorry, mommy. Oh, you know, okay, so at least he uh, recognized it and hopefully it won't happen again. Anyway, it's really important to communicate with kindness, tell others how you want to be treated and ask for what you want with requests. And if you're living with other people, invite them to also express what they need in order to be comfortable you know, sharing a home right now. And inevitably, when you're sharing space with people and you're all stuck together, there's going to be moments when you get in each other's way or you get on each other's nerves. So what do you do? 
Well, a friend of mine uh, is living with a very grumpy housemate who yells a lot. She is planning to move after this whole thing, but right now she's going to be there and she's learned to give him plenty of space and she's really dealing with it well. She actually has a, another place she can go in the evenings, which is great. So if you're living with a challenging person, resist the temptation to engage in bickering or fighting with them. You don't want to go there. Just let them be and have compassion for them. They're going through a hard time. So see if you have it in your heart to have some compassion. So from, from a place of compassion and care, you're ready for my next relationship tip. And this is a, again a tip for surviving with others. And this one is to connect without judgment. Connect without judgment. It's easy to judge. It's easy to judge ourselves. It's easy to judge others as right or wrong, good or bad. We do it all the time. So I invite you to drop the judgment and just be fully present fully present with the people you're living with. It's such a gift to show up and be fully present. Give them that gift and be curious and appreciative of what they're going through. So my husband, Steve, is, is going through something right now. He's waiting for ankle replacement surgery and he was supposed to have had it. They canceled it and he's hoping to reschedule. It will happen eventually, but right now it's really painful for him to walk. He's got the boot and He's kind of bummed about this whole thing. I can't blame him. So I've learned to have empathy for what he's going through. And it's, it's just important to have empathy for whatever somebody might be going through. So my, in my case, I guess got the two of them and, and my dog. My dog is great. Though. So my, my son only, only has us for playmates right now. So I've been entering his virtual world, his real worlds. I've been playing video games with him, playing basketball with him, playing Nerf guns with him. I used to have a lot of judgment. I used to think, oh, some of these things are, you know, too violent. I don't like them. But you know what? Nerf gun battles are actually really fun. I've been having a blast with that, believe it or not. So if you are sheltering with your family, you want to make sure that you make time to be together as a family, you know, have meals together, do gardening together, play games, watch movies, whatever, do something so you're connecting. And if you have a partner, you want to connect and have time for just the two of you. It's sacred time to be together. So make sure you, you make that time and that you're supportive of each other. And really let your partner know how much you appreciate them. That goes awesome. along. Wendy, I think we've gone on probably about almost 30 minutes. So, Oh, I <laughs> oh my God. I had no idea. It was really, it, it's, you, you share so many things. Did you want to just wrap up? Uh, yes, wrap up? I am going to wrap up. Oh yeah. my God, this is the end of <laughs> wrapping up. I am sorry. I had no idea it went that long. Goodness. Okay. Well, this, okay. Well, go well, quick. You know, I will share my screen. I have a, a little thing I can share with you so you get the end. So this can be a time of transformation of a deeper love for yourself and for others. Um, let me see. How do I do this? I want to share this. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to remind you of these tips as you're moving forward. So you can choose where you focus your attention. You can choose to be grateful. You can give yourself plenty of me time, reach out to others, have boundaries with anybody you're sheltering with, communicate with kindness and turn your complaints into requests, connect without judgment, be present with others. And if you want support, you can take me up on my offer for a free consultation. If you'd like any support with any of this and with finding love, rejuvenating your relationship or just staying sane while you're sheltering in place. So if you want, you can put your contact info in the chat or just reach out to me and my contact information is there. So thank you. I didn't realize I was going on so long. What a blabber mouth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, any questions, I will stop this share and see what questions you might have. Uh, let me unmute everyone. Yep, go ahead. Any questions? Dr. Dr. Linda, what are you doing there? <laughs> I'm trying to write in the chat box. Oh, I, yeah, was that a magnifying <laughs> glass? I'm trying to read the chat box. It is. It's a magnifying glass. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, there's lots of things you're grateful for. I see that. 
Lots of people are thanking you. Uh, I'm grateful to be a part of this group. Thank you, friends. Um, let me see. Oh, I can read it. Yep, yep, yep. So sums this okay. Wendy, I have a question for yeah, you. Certainly. Um, uh, you know, whenever I, whenever I'm at your place, um, it always seems like you and Steve just have this, you know, the photographs and everything. Do you guys, do you guys have many little arguments and tips? I'm just, I'm just curious. <laughs> Believe it or not, we did not even have an argument till our son came along. So that was amazing. But uh, yes, having a child, sometimes there are things like uh -huh. he thinks fast food is fine. I'm not too thrilled with it. You know, there's stuff like that. But you know, I kind of let a lot of that go. Uh, As a parent, that <laughs> is not but, but, in, but in general, you guys are, the, 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 the pictures are, are pretty accurate. Then. And, you know, and the <laughs> pictures, courtesy of oh, Stephanie. Stephanie, yes. Some of them are from her. Anyway. <laughs> Dr. Wendy, it, it, it's it. It's Elaine hiding behind her picture. Well, hi, Elaine. Beautiful picture. I'm, so, I'm sorry for the picture, but no you problem. said something so wonderful that I want to hear again. It what? was about the people who live alone, who might be isolated and need support. And you said something so interesting that in needing support, that you can even you could feel good encouraging others. Would you say that again? It was so wonderful. Yeah, so that's something we don't realize when we're discouraged ourselves, the great way to become encouraged is to reach out to others and support them. So if you're Beautiful. feeling isolated, Thank you. Yeah, well, you won't feel isolated if you're connecting with somebody and saying, how can I help you? Because then, then your tension's off of you and it's on them and mm -hmm. everybody feels better. Win-win. Mm -hmm. It's so, so wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Wendy. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Any other, one more question, maybe? Comment, question? Comment. Comment. I have a comment. Well, it's just interesting because um, it's not just if you're lonely to reach out. Like we have a, our next door neighbor is an older guy and he's, you know, in his 70s and he lives alone and um, we set up, his house is a little bit above ours, and we set up a pulley system for a bucket. And, um, you know, we've been mutually reaching out. While I've been on this call, I had a pound cake delivered. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's staying connected, even if, you, even if you're not lonely, and Absolutely. even if you feel like you're just doing it for the other person, that's, that's pity, right? Um, but you can be charitable with your time and still reap wonderful rewards that you didn't think you need, you know, you don't need or want or, you know, but just, it's just bonus, you know, so that's all. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Don't wait till you're lonely. Just reach out. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> reach out. yeah absolutely. Most of us do wait, though. <clears throat> yeah, uh, we do. yeah, I think there's a. Uh, uh, you know, we oh the howl. You guys hearing it? Oh the howl! Oh they're howling here. Mm -hmm. What? The eight o'clock howl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think I think many of us are pride uh, have pride. You know, we're we're too hey, proud. It's toned down to... around here. What's that? It, it toned down around here. It's a, I I don't hear it anymore. Oh your howl. Okay, yeah, it just got started where I I'm in Greenbrae. Oh, yeah. yeah, but I, th I think many of us are really proud and sometimes it's hard to reach out because we're just like, oh, it might not matter. And so it's really important, like you said, Wendy, to, um, mm. you know, just, you know, we all want to help each other. We just don't know how. Yeah. Pe people yeah. are glad to hear from you. Yeah, so. mm. yeah, exactly. Well, that was lovely. Um, I am going to end recording. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Stop recording.